In this video, I will show you how to remove unwanted objects in an image using the Healing Brush and Clone Tool in Adobe Lightroom CC. Looking through your images, you might find little spots or distracting items that you would like to correct. For instance, in this photo of some Vicuña from South America, I see a piece of broken plastic that I would like to remove. So the third icon down on the right looks like a Band-Aid. That is the Healing Brush Tool. Clicking on that icon will bring up this panel. And first you'll want to check to see what size of brush you'll need to cover over the object. So this first slider here will make your brush larger or smaller. However, you'll have to move the cursor over the object to match the size to make sure it's big enough to cover it. But there is an excellent shortcut to adjusting brushes. Use the bracket keys on your keyboard. The right bracket will make the circle bigger and the left will make it smaller. Once you have the correct brush size, you just click on top of that object. Now you'll see two circles. The first circle is what you just covered and the second is where Lightroom has sampled part of your image. Notice that as I move the second circle around the photo, what it's hovering over shows up in that first circle. So if you don't like where Lightroom has chosen as its source point, you can change it. Sometimes I get confused over which circle is which. Know that the sampled circle will always point to the original spot. You can also change the size of the circle by going to the outside of the circle, see the cursor change, and then click and drag, and you can drag in or out to adjust that size. Notice that when I go really, really small, the plastic object is still there. So it's as if the healing brush has put a patch on top of it. If for some reason you don't see these circles, you can go up to View, Edit Tools, Show Overlay, Cycle Overlay. Or you can use the shortcut key, which is the O on your keyboard. That will turn the visibility on and off of those circles. Now let's look at another example. I have this photo of Snowflake and Lily, and the cable in the background is very distracting. You don't have to use the healing brush with just one click. You can use it as a brush and you can paint over the area instead. You'll want to pay attention to what is showing up in your selection. You don't want to have something that repeats in the patch. It can be a telltale sign that the image has been digitally manipulated, like this little black dot right here, or this electrical outlet, for example. Also look at the different shades of blue. You'll want to pick from a source that is close to the original spot to match those shades more precisely. This can be very difficult when removing something from the sky, like a bird or a power line. You'll be surprised at how many shades of blue there are in the sky. So know that you'll have to use something directly next to the image to get the shades to match. Let's take a look at the sliders and how they will affect the brushwork that I just added. The feather slider will harden or soften the edges, and that is very helpful in this particular photograph. The opacity slider will make the patch either more transparent or more opaque. Not so helpful in this scenario. And if your first attempt of brushwork doesn't cover everything, you can add more brushwork over it. It's helpful to zoom into the area, and it also helps to click the O key on your keyboard to turn off the initial overlay. This allows you to see better when you're adding your second patch. You can click the O key again to turn on the overlay and adjust the selection to match the patch that you're trying to cover. Now I'll zoom out, let's do one more. I've got this yellow line here that I'd like to remove. So I'll start at the top edge and then drag my mouse down with the healing brush and notice that it's a bit wobbly. If you wanna get rid of some brush work, just make sure it's selected and then use the delete or backspace keys on your keyboard. If the object that you're covering is a straight line, either horizontal or vertical, you can click and hold the shift key as you drag your brush. This will make sure that that line stays nice and straight. Back over in the panel on the right, you have the visualize spots option. That inverts your image 
and more or less details will become apparent using this slider. This is great for pointing out specks of dust, for example. They're a bit more visible in this view. So if you wanted a perfectly flawless wall or background, visualizing spots could be a useful choice to help you with your work. Let's look at one final example that is even more complex. We had some llamas visit the quad and I wanna clean up the image. Maybe clean up the background or remove this leash, for example. So using the healing brush, I'll brush over it. And the healing brush does an okay job, but there's another tool that might help me match this shadowed area a bit better. Under this drop down, you have the clone tool. And this tool will stamp an area of your photo exactly. Many times I use these two tools together. I'll leave the healing brush, but I'll use the clone tool to copy this shadowed area of the grass exactly. And so these two tools together are making a much better match. Now for this table up here in the background, I need to zoom in, so I'll command or control plus sign. And now trying to scroll up with my mouse isn't working, so I'll close out of the healing brush. That will bring me this hand tool that I can use to scroll upward, and then I'll open back up the healing brush panel. I'm going to do the reverse steps from what I did last time. I'm gonna use the clone tool first. However, one large brush stroke won't work this time because the source area is not large enough to cover. There's too many things in the way like this pillar, for example. So there might be times when you'll have to work in smaller strokes and layer one set of strokes on top of another, overlapping your brushwork to cover in a certain area. Notice that I have to pay attention to match the straight line where the concrete and the grass meet. You need to line it up just so in order to fool your viewer's eye. Finally, I'll use the healing brush to clean up and blend in any harsh outlines. So I like the clone tool for matching things perfectly, especially if it has to have an exact color or line or pattern. And I like the healing brush for covering things more organically. The healing brush is also great for removing things like blemishes in portraits and such. So before I leave you, I'll let you in on a bit of a secret. I used the healing brush and clone tool to dramatically change up this photo. And if I've done the job well, you didn't notice that anything was strange or out of place. And that is how you remove unwanted objects in a photo using the healing brush and clone tool in Adobe Lightroom CC.